Hey, everyone. This is going to be hard for me to say because this is a really challenging concept to wrap your head around. And I like to say that your needs are your responsibility. And sometimes that means asking for your needs to be met and to make clear, loving requests in a way that is easy for others to meet your needs, right? Getting really specific about the action item that will lead to one of your needs to be fulfilled. That's one part for sure is coming up with the courage required, the language to make those those requests, and the specific action items that will lead to a request being met, right? That's part of the job. What do I need? How can that need be met? And how can I make that request in a clear, loving way? That's one big part. The other huge part is hard to say. And that is that some of your needs are inside jobs. That means it's your responsibility to meet that need without anybody else trying to do it for you. You might call these like core needs. And I'm rereading Marianne Williamson's A Return to Love, which is a book that I continuously go back to year after year. And I was struck by a passage, which is not a popular one, just a sentence in the book. Marianne says, if you don't already believe in yourself, another person cannot convince you that you're okay. That means that if you are looking at others to help you meet your need for self-worth, self-love, and self-esteem, those people will always fall short. Always. Because those needs are inside jobs. The word self is in front of esteem, love, and worth. That means that no amount of asking will ever really meet the need because you're looking for external source when you need to be looking inside. If you don't feel worthy of love, having someone reassure you that they love you will never feel like enough. It might temporarily relieve the existential pain of not feeling worthy or of not feeling enough, but it won't last. And you'll constantly be looking at others to help bolster your value as a human. And no one can ever do that. You're setting them up for failure. And you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Now, there's a big difference between that right? Consistently, constantly looking at external validation and every now and then feeling low self-esteem and asking for a little reassurance from a loved one. Huge difference, right? If you are feeling temporarily low in confidence and you have a workshop or a project or some big commitment coming up, you can easily say to a loved one, hey, I'm feeling a little anxious, nervous about this thing coming up. Can you just like boost me a little bit? Can you pump up my tires? Right? Can you tell me that I'm great and that I am often anxious before large events and I always end up doing pretty well? That's fine. Right? If you're feeling a little bit of relationship anxiety and you want to ask your partner, Hey, I'm feeling a little insecure these days. Can you tell me what you love about me and why you're with me? Which, by the way, is a beautiful practice. Beautiful practice. 
And I want you to be able to make those requests. But if you're looking for that day in and day out, because you don't feel good about yourself, you don't like yourself, you don't feel confident ever, you have low self-esteem, those requests are not going to be enough. Sometimes it's an inside job. And that sucks. It really sucks. Because that work is long, arduous, complicated, nuanced, takes time, energy, resources, money, often, not always. There's a saying in uh, 12-step recovery that... uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that we're all trying to fill a God-sized hole in ourselves. And we think that a new MacBook or a new motorcycle or enough words of affirmation or enough commitment will fill that God-sized hole. But really, the only thing that can fill that is love, self-love, which is not, which is not different than God. Or, ho- or higher power, or holy being, right? That is love. But you need to cultivate that love yourself. It'll feel great when someone else loves you. We know that, right? When the object of our desire makes us feel good, says things that please us, helps us feel validated, that's going to feel great. and. It's not going to really do the work that needs to happen. So if you're consistently outsourcing your needs for self-esteem, self-love, self-worth, self-value, I would look into bolstering your sense of self on your own. And right off the top of my head, doing things to build up your confidence doing work that is fulfilling to you, having rich relationships with friends and family, building and developing and investing in a community, moving your body regularly, right? Body activation, some sort of exercise, giving back, volunteering to people who have less than you will always help bolster your sense of self. So so will dealing with any mental issues that you have or exploring your childhood trauma, your stories with a trained professional, psychologist, therapist, counselor, psychiatrist. Looking at your triggers and your patterns and choosing or trying desperately to do it differently. Reconnecting to your emotional body. What do you feel? What's coming up for you? How is that connected? Right? Getting curious about your emotional nature. Enlarging your spiritual life by connecting to God, spirit, religion, the universe, whatever you want to call it. Connecting to something bigger than you. Because you are not the most powerful thing in this world by far. Learning how to set healthy boundaries. Protecting your energy. Protecting your resources, your time, your space. Saying no with love to things that don't fit you is a great way to bolster your sense of self. Speaking up for what you want, when you want it. Right? Speaking up for yourself can do wonders for your confidence and you owning your journey towards self-love. Working on your trust, commitment, intimacy, and relationship issues because these will not go away. They won't go away. There isn't some magical person that just gets you and will be able to sidestep and matrix move around all of your triggers. It's just not going to happen. Relationships are where we get to do this work. 
right? Someone steps on your toes, metaphorically. They touch an old wound, right? They, they like get close to it and the alarm bells go off. That's an opportunity for you to go and look at this stuff. Look at your traumas. Look at your wounds. Look at your stories. How you got here. This work happens in relationships. But we can't depend on others to bolster our sense of self. It's not going to happen. And that's why I said this is hard for me to say because some of you are probably making unworkable requests from your loved ones. And I don't like to, to use the word unreasonable because what is reasonable to you might not be reasonable to me. But is the request that you're making unworkable? Will most people find that request hard to meet? If you were in their shoes, would you not be likely to say yes? Are you making unworkable requests? Are you making requests that most people would find easy to meet or that most people would find really hard to meet? And there's a little bit of nuance here because people have different tolerances for what is and isn't reasonable or workable. Some people might not object to being in constant contact via text and others might a lot. I just want to highlight how monumentally difficult it is to figure out what is yours and what can be met by other people. Ultimately, that's the work that you're going to have to do on your own by tapping into where do I feel a, a big sense of lack in my life? Is it around my worth, my esteem as a person, my value? Do I love myself? And then finding ways of bolstering that on your own while also making requests from other people to gauge can they or can they not meet those needs. This is hard work, monumentally difficult work. And if you're listening, cool, you're on the journey. You are definitely on the journey. And this isn't a pitch for any of my courses, but I have a lot of courses that can help with this. I have a co course on emotional availability, I have one on building confidence with Jillian Richardson. I have one on healthy communication. I have one on getting your needs met. I even have one on flirting with confidence. So these tools help, right? Podcasts help. Following Instagram accounts that are pro-therapy and pro-self-development and pro-personal pro development helps. Reading books helps. That all helps. And sometimes that's not enough. And I have preached the powers of therapy and I will continue to preach the powers of therapy. And I also know that therapy isn't approachable, accessible to everybody. And if you're listening to this, you're on the right path. You're absolutely on the right path. <sighs> That's it. That's the podcast. And the invitation is to get curious around what needs you might be outsourcing that you could be doing the heavy lifting. And by the way, the, the more heavy lifting you do, the less pressure it is on other people. The more present you can be for other people. Some of these core needs, we're going to be struggling with them forever. And that's okay. I'll probably never ever get there fully healed. And that's not the point. Point is to get curious when shit comes up. I'm glad you're here. Really. Have a beautiful week and take good care of yourself. <laughs>